believe that family, our youths, our young ones, our children, we need them, redeem them, and clean them. You see them or else the enemy will come and scheme them. Family. I mean that. Family. Education for the nation that's full of salvation, biology, astronomy, and African theology, geography. Family. I love that. Family. Whatever the age or the stage that youth will be engaged with tutorials, activities, and videos from the studios of the Priest Isaac Institute of Holistic Knowledge. Family. The International Homeschool Program is designed and recommended for all ages. The psychological state of our children is very important, especially in the environment that most of us live in. The International Homeschool Program provides online classes, activities, and videos that are fun for the youth and edifies them of their African heritage as well as the higher sciences. To enroll your family today, visit www.priestisaacinstitute.com, go to the main website, and search for Youth Corner. Or you can email priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com for a course sample. Thank you, thanks. Prosperity is a herbal remedy that has been naturally designed to nourish the prostate gland. Prosperity uses a combination of leaves, roots, and barks to create a tincture designed to nourish your prostate gland. It also will assist in prostate-related issues such as erectile dysfunction, swollen prostates, and problems related to the passage of urine. Call or WhatsApp 728-8289, 728-8289 and get your bottle today. Prosperity. Now, when we go into not all, that's another level because remember, Many ones consider that Aset or Isis is the same character as Hathor. Sometimes you see Isis or Aset with the horns of Hathor. You must understand, you know, Egyptology, as they call it, is almost still in its infant stages as it relates to the exact knowledge, even the reading of the glyphs. Yes, I am for sure, I'm positive that the understanding of the hieroglyphs is a reality. I'm not one of those that's going to tell you it's never been deciphered, but it still has somewhat to go to bring those of us in this time fully up to speed with what the glyph is saying. So so what the narrator is saying now, maybe for those who are just joining the program, what the, 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 the narrator is saying is that there is another character known as Sihathor, which many confuse with Sobek Neferu. You see, we got to keep in mind, as you heard uh, Hawass saying there a moment ago, we we know very little about Sobek Neferu. And that, that is the truth. And this uh, brother here, um, Woodside, would have done his research, as you him explain, that he would have traveled to different parts of the globe where the remnants, whatever can be found of Sobek Neferu, would uh, reside. He was just highlighting a torso of her. He was highlighting what you could consider a mini bust as well. And at the same time, he was giving some good information, some good history on exactly how this 12th dynastic pharaoh came to the throne she actually brought to an end the 12th dynasty. And if you comprehend the mathematics properly, she is really the first female um, pharaoh. Now, again, as I said earlier, at the beginning of the program, well, not at the beginning of the program, but at the beginning of this segment of the program, I was showing you that the term pharaoh, which is really in definition supposed to mean the great house. 
Now, that is a term like the term monarch, if you're going to use that language. Pharaoh is not an African term, you know. It is not an ancient Kemetic term or an ancient Egyptian term as, as such. Egypt on Egyptian is not really an ancient Kemetic term. But the word Pharaoh is somewhat like monarch. It is male and female. So you have male pharaohs, you have female pharaohs, just like you have a male monarch and you have a female monarch. So the great Hatshepsut, which as you heard, the the uh, the historians a moment ago explained is not really the first pharaoh as many would like to say. But Hatshepsut now is a female pharaoh as such. She's not a female king. When I hear my brothers, even some of our esteemed scholars, who like to say that Hatshepsut is a female king. <laughs> no, no, let's not get there. As I said earlier, you're going to make people, you know, that, that's going to give life to this theory they like to say about Hatshepsut being the first dyke and all of that kind of stuff. No, no, no. She is a she is a she's an empress, a queen at least. She's not a king. There's no she king. We're not into that. She's the ruler. Now the fact that you have to put on her the title king. Again, it comes back to the same meditation we were talking about when we were doing the program on Eve being the mother of sin and all of that stuff. You know, it really belittles the woman. The fact that, yes, we have a woman ruler now. Yes, that's our queen. No, she's a, she's a female king. <laughs> that's an insult, really. She can't be no female king. It's like saying he's a male queen. She is a queen, at least. And we're not too fond of these words, neither I comprehend. But let's not mix up the conversation. The point is, let's keep the gender intact. Now again, the term pharaoh. Now, Nesud Bete really refers to the ruler, from my understanding, of the both land. So that is who she is. All the empresses, none of them were kings. Now, if you want to say one more time that they were pharaohs because they were the monarch of the day, oh, that's a different situation. And this is just my personal observation. Yeah, I'm not trying to change no one's culture. If you still want to say Hatshepsut is the you know, female king, it's up to you if that is your joy. Now, but yes, Sobek, Neferu, one of the things that we highlighted or was highlighted a moment ago as it relates to her is that, you know, she, she uh, uh, expressed herself in her full feminine form. So it's not a case like Hatshepsut that she was seen with the male beard and she was seen wearing certain garments of the king. No, Sobek Neferu is seen expressed as a full woman, even with her breast and everything as the feminine expression of a woman, yet still considered the supreme ruler of the land. Twelfth dynasty. Hatshepsut is... Uh, the new kingdom time, the ninth, the eighteenth dynastic period, that would be Hatshepsut. You know. So, so that information there that's beautiful. Again, give thanks for those who are uh, subscribers. You could definitely replay that once more. And again, for those who are not subscribers to the Tiger's Nest radio program, of course, you know it's a simple thing. You don't know priestisaacinstitute.com, the website priestisaacinstitute.com. And of course, you could definitely get a monthly subscription, a, a, a six month subscription, or a full year subscription of the Tiger's Nest. And you don't know what the catch phrase for this is the Tiger's Nest subscription. You'll never miss another episode again. All right. So, no matter where you are, oh, I came in late. 
Oh, I just got this little piece. Oh, whatever the case is. I fell asleep the afternoon and I never got up until midnight. Whatever it is, it's all right. You'll never miss another episode of the Tiger's Nest again because we are going to send the program for you. You're going to get it in your inbox via the email. A simple thing. So just contact me and say, Honorable Priest, I would like to be, you know, a member of the subscription team for the Tiger's Nest radio program. And, and, and no sooner said than done. Yeah, that's a phrase they used to have around here on the radio station ZDK when you request a song. No sooner said than done. Yeah. So I'm looking for you to email me and let's do the subscription Tiger's Nest. Now, listen, before... I go into my little understanding of Sobek and Neferu. I want to go into my understanding of Sobek himself. You know, when you hear of the ancient Kemetic deity, especially since it has become, you know, this kind of fad and uh, a kind of, um, it's good, you know, this, uh, the in thing, get it into Kemet and all of that stuff. You always hear about Heru. You always hear about Osiris and you are Assad. You hear one speak of, you know, Amun and, and Ra. Those are the main ones you would hear. And maybe Isis and Aset, same one. And maybe Kepra. But, but, but usually to, to hear about Sobek, many ones may ask, who's that? <laughs> the crocodile god. Hmm. Maybe because many ones are not too too friendly with the crocodile as such. Now, let me just give you some information here with an understanding. Literally, I'm going to read this from Rashi Krushan Egyptian Museum. They should have a good thing to say here. Sobek. Sobek was among the oldest deities named in the pyramid text. Now, you see, you have to take, you see, when it comes to this sort of information, you can't just overlook points like that. So this gives credibility to this deity. Sobek was among the oldest deities named in the pyramid texts. The texts inscribed on the walls of tombs. He was the lord of the crocodiles. Ooh, he was the lord of the crocodiles and was depicted with a crocodile head. You're serious. Eh, eh. That's how we did it. It's called esoteric expression. Don't get carried away. It's not Halloween. Okay. Some ancient Egyptian sects believe that Sobek created order in the universe and the world when he arose from the dark water and that he was the creator of the Nile River. He was often associated with fertility. So, hence, you have to die. You have to immediately link Sobek, obviously, with happy, because it is happy. When you see the two happies together, actually bringing forth the headwaters of the Nile, the Lake Tana, and of course, the, the, the out of Uganda, you have the White Nile and the Blue Nile. And they meet together in Khartoum and create the Nile that we know that is aligned with the Milky Way. That is happy. So if Sobek is the, the god of the Nile, and the god of fertility as well, just like happy. That's why you see happy, which is really a male with his breasts. And yet still, you know, the, the creator of the Nile, they must be one. Because you see, this is what we were saying earlier about Sihator and Sobek Neferu. Sihator, and I don't want to confuse no one now, Sihator is a human being. Sobek Neferu is a human being. Sobek Neferu is an, an, an empress, a ruler of ancient Kemet, what they will call a pharaoh. She was the king. She was 
for lack of a better term, a queen. Just to clarify the, the, the gender. We don't want to play with that in this day and time at all. To the point that she expressed herself in her full femininity. Yeah. She wasn't wearing no man's clothes. Full female. And she had a similar touch to another individual who, who the, the experts know very little about by the name of Sihator. In other words, some actually go as far as to say she and Sihator is the same character. They're the same person. The same thing could be said again of Aset and Hator herself. And these are not literal queens as such or people. These are the Neter, the Neteru, the what people so call as gods, which are really um, symbolic personalities, characteristics, principles. Osiris, Horus, um, Sobek, Isis, Hathor. These are uh, principles, again, which people call gods. In some other terms, they say they're angels. But the point is, they're not literal human beings as such, like Sobek Neferu, like Tutank Amam, like Akhenaten. These are literal people in Hotep. These are the people now. Dizoja of the Great Pyramid, uh, uh, the Step Pyramid, these are literal people. Ra and Horus, this is a part of the mythology. Some may say, well, they used to exist a long time ago. Okay, fair enough, but the legend of them is a part of the mythology. You understand? In the legend, they live for a million years and all kind of stuff. That's a part of the mythology. <laughs> you know? But well, we know Akhenaten lived to such and such a time and he was born at such and such a date according to such and such a stellar, etc. So I just want to clarify this to the students. You know, this is not a, uh, I know it's a radio program, but we're not here to entertain alone. You know, we're here to, but we're hardly here to entertain at all. We're here to edify uh, with, with vibes. If you, you want to call it entertainment, it's you. But we do it with vibes and we educate and we want you to clearly comprehend what we're saying. Good. So Sobek now. Not Sobek Neferu. That's someone's name. That's a, 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 an empress. You know. And her name is associated with the, the, the deity or the Neter or the principle known as Sobek. Good. The beautiful goddess of Sobek. One of the definitions. So Sobek now is the crocodile head god, as I just explained. Sobek was uh, revered for his ferocity. He was ferocious. Hmm? Sobek was ferocious. Eat you up and tear you down and all of that. Sobek was revered for his ferocity and quick movements. Yeah. However, he was an unpredictable deity. Interesting. Check them characteristics. Let's, let's, let's examine this Sobek here. Sounds familiar to me. Hmm? Not to you. Or you'll see what I'm talking about. Sobek was revered for his ferocity and quick movements. However, what are you wearing? What are you wearing? What are you wearing? Visit us, priestisaacinstitute.com. Have you heard of Archaeo Astronomy? I am the Honorable Priest Isaac and I am certified in the field of Archaeoastronomy. Do you want to learn Archaeoastronomy? Well, book your ticket today and join me in the Caribbean in the island of Antigua for nine days and nights, seven of which will be in the classroom studying and in the field researching 
on Green Castle Hill, Mount Anu, the Stonehenge of the Caribbean. This is a studycation. You will visit the beach, experience the Rastafari camps, yoga, vegan food, and much more. For more information, visit priestisaacinstitute.com or email us at priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com. Sounds familiar to me. Hmm? Not to you. Or you'll see what I'm talking about. Sobek was revered for his ferocity and quick movements. However, he was an unpredictable deity, as were his crocodile counterparts. He was sometimes associated with chaos. He was he associated with chaos. As the crocodile god so bad, associated with chaos. But but he was ferocious. And he had some quick movements. And he was very unpredictable. This is the crocodile god from the Nile. Yeah. The people of ancient Egypt worshipped Sobek in order to appease both him and crocodiles in general and also to ensure the fertility. That's another thing that Happy deals with too. Fertility. I said that, didn't I? Yes, you did. Oh, sorry. I couldn't. Anyway, good. Don't be sorry. You're right. The ancient people, people of ancient Egypt, worship Sobek in order to appease both him and crocodiles in general, and also to ensure the fertility of their people and crops. Many mummified crocodiles of all ages and sizes have been found in Egyptian tombs. They have some of them in museums and so on. Real thing. Real thing, I'm telling you. Sobek was associated with both Seth, his father, and Horus, whom he helped birth. He was also considered to be the army's patron because of his ferocity. All right. So this is this is Sobek specifically the deity, the crocodile god. Again, many of us don't talk about Sobek. You hear ones again, you know, give thanks, Ma'at. Yeah, Ma'at is another very famous, how oh, we left out Ma'at, man. Very famous deity in the chain of famous deities in Netaru that we speak of, but not Sobek, the crocodile part. You see, in them times, especially when you can identify the God, eh? Haile Selassie and King Emmanuel and Idi Amin, Empress Menin, Marcus Garvey. I mean, when you can identify certain energy and figures amongst I and I, even you, myself, those around you, you know, we carry specific energies, if we just take the time to examine our own selves in the mind, we will see the kind of energy that we carry. We could identify ourselves with frequency, time, space, element, and all the realms of science. Yeah. So, Sobek was uh, is the army's patron. Eh, eh. That is interesting. Hear that, you know, the army, you know. The army. So the army, its patron, is the crocodile god. Wow. That is serious. Now remember in Kush, is it a pedimek? You know, is the, the god of war. But we say the patriarch of the army is the ferocious, the swift, tear you up alive, crocodile god. So bad. So be it. Yeah. So it's very and it's, it's very important when you observe 
who Sobek is. Because just like the Olmec, we all know the Olmec is the God of War. We all know the Olmec itself, you know, represents uh, 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 the same Shaiti Kotli. And we link Idi Amin with the Olmec. Sobek too. Yeah. Listen to this. Listen to this. I hope you're listening to this. Listen to this. There are many crocodiles here. Very many, yes. And this is a very good area of the crocodiles. It is a headquarter of the crocodile, you can see. You see, as it is running very fast. I think this might be captain of crocodile. <laughs> you hear that? You see, you must understand it. This is, you, 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 you don't find, give thanks you have recordings of King Iman. Give thanks you have recordings of Marcus God, Idi Amin, Haile Selassie, and, and other great individuals too. But these are limited collections. Yeah, you only, you only have but that amount of footage of Idi Amin. You only have that amount of footage of Haile Selassie, although, you know, we have a good amount and some we still haven't seen. Don't get me wrong. But here you have the footage of Idi Amin. History has now, has, has crystallized this, immortalized this, where Idi Amin is encountering the crocodile. And the crocodile obeyed him. And hear what he said. Hear the words he used. This must be captain of crocodile. Remember, it is said that Sobek is not just the crocodile head god, you know, he is the head of the crocodiles, the head of the Nile that flows out of Uganda, the head of the Nile. That flows out of Lake Tana, so bad. The patron of the army, the army, the man, the army, the god of war. Who's the head of the army? Dada. Very many, yes. And this is a very good area of the crocodiles. It is the headquarters of the crocodile, you can see. You see, as it is running very fast. Hold on, hold on. This is the headquarters of the crocodile. Listen. <laughs> as it is running very fast, as you can see, if, if you know the video, the one on camera ain't running fast. He's just sitting there with his mouth open, but he's going to move too. This is the captain of crocodiles. I'm moving on, don't worry, but we have to we have to savor this moment here. Yeah. Our, our, our attention span and memory span is is very short. We'll forget in the morning. Let's let's savor this now. Idi Amin is telling you clearly. This is the captain of the crocodiles, Sobek. And this is the headquarters of the crocodiles. A so very good area of the crocodiles. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uganda. There are many crocodiles here. Very many, yes. And this is a very good area of the crocodiles. It is a headquarter of the crocodile, you can see. So as it is running very fast. I think this might be captain oh, of crocodile. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes, he understands me now, he's moving. Yes, sir. <laughs> very big. Yes. Ah, it's very good. Yes. And we are now going actually to the headquarters of crocodile, where they, they lay more eggs, they produce more children, where we are going now. And let me tell you, I mean, I, I mean, I know day after day, some people listen to me and say, man, every night, every night, not even in the night, every time this man speaks, he goes on YouTube, I see him on Instagram, he always have some sort of 
Rubik cubes or the puzzle kind of conversation. He has a good history, but he just twists it up with his own little stuff. Family, this ain't my own little stuff. This is what it is. All the so-called my own little stuff you see we do every time we come. Believe me, it's the inspiration from the almighty I am. You understand? I mean, yo, I give thanks for who I am. Eh? Trust me. I, I, I hear people say they wish they were this person and that person. Impossible. You couldn't highlight nobody else. Me, I give thanks for who I am. You know why? Because I know who I am. That's what it is. That's why I promote knowing who you are. Eh? In the same way we can sit down, I say this all the time, the same way I sit down and look, hey, so back, yeah, Idi Amin, so on, so on, so. In the same way, you're supposed to be able to can look at your own self and say, hey, hey, this is me, you know, this is why I'm here, this, this is my agenda, you know, okay, this is my mandate, that's not who you are. What spirits, what characteristics you're connected to? Why you think we into the planets and the stars? This ain't no joke. Huh. And thanks to Pluto coming out of the, the unicorn and going into the Aquarius. A lot of things taking place even as we speak. So, this is the headquarters of the crocodiles. Idiom. This is the Captain of crocodiles. Yes, I, yeah. Uh, so bad, the crocodile god. No, so, 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 so bad, never and give down so that, that, that nice moment, yeah. As it relates to her, I think we got a good amount of information there a moment ago. Um, again, give thanks for all subscribers so I know you could listen to it again um, as it relates to her. They spoke a lot about Amen Hemhat. Amen Amen Hemhat the first and not the first, the third, pardon me, and Amen Amen Hemhat the fourth. And one of the things that stand out really of Amen Hemhat really the third you know for those who have seen the bust of him he he's renowned for having some serious looking dreadlocks you understand and uh yeah mighty and terrible so the narration a moment ago gave a good understanding of exactly what his connection is i'm just going to read some information here about the Sebek, Sobek Neferu, also known as Neferu Sobek. Just quickly here, just to kind of summarize a, a lot of what we spoke of earlier and what we were listening to. So her name is defined, the beauty of Sobek, the beauty of the goddess Sobek, or the god Sobek, pardon me. So she's directly connected to the crocodile god. You know, and she was a pharaoh of ancient Egypt and the last ruler of the 12th dynasty of the Middle Kingdom. And she ascended the throne following the death of Amen Emhat IV. Of course, we already went through that information there. Uh, and it is said that uh, after her father, Amen Hem. Amen Emhat the third. Again, her reign lasted three years, ten months, and twenty four days, according to the Tun Rin uh, King's list. Now she stands out again, being the first female to really adopt what is called as the royal titulary. So she really was seen as the supreme ruler. Of the land, of course, before her, they would have had other female uh, rulers. So those who would have ruled in their own in their own rights as such, but not as a supreme ruler. So she was the first to adopt again the full royal titulary, and uh, you also highlight 
for example, from the first dynasty, you have Mary Neath, Mary Neath, the love of the goddess Neath, but she had uh, ruled with as a regent with her son. Now, this is in the first dynasty. You have again Mary Neath, and she ruled as a regent with her son. Very important. And you have a glyph that bears her name. I don't know if there is another glyph that shows her really as a picture. Some still refer to her as a consort, but really I know she's a regent specifically of ancient Kemet again during the first dynasty. And of course, you know, ruled in her own right specifically. That's Mary Neath, but she was not seen in the same form as a supreme ruler. Uh, as a regent, yes, but not as a supreme ruler. And that was not seen until, again, the sister Sobek Neferu. Very important information. And then you have, even in the fifth dynasty, you have Seti Bahor. Seti Bahor, she is an ancient comedic queen as well. And um, this is from, as I said, the fifth dynasty, but more to the end of the fifth dynasty. And she was said to be the wife of one Dijed Kari, Dijed Kari. And of course, she herself, uh, she was a female uh, uh, um, king regent based on the manner of her, her, her monuments and the way that she was depicted. So she actually ruled with the king as, as most as most sisters really did, but her rule was really highlighted as, as almost like an equal specifically clean. And it's the same thing can, say, can be said of uh, Nefer, Nefer Tart, Nefer Tart, Nefer Tart, Nefer Titi. Yes, Nefer Titi, the wife no, that's Nefertari, pardon me, the wife of Ramesses II, that is why, and even Queen T, all of these sisters here, that's the wife of Amen Hotep, Amen Hotep, not Amen M. Hat now, but Amen Hotep the third. You know, all of these sisters, the way that they were depicted along with their kings, unlike many other queens, clearly show that they, without any discussion, had a, a, a clear co-rulership with their kings, if you comprehend what I'm saying. So all of this is important, you know. So, 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 but the reason why I'm highlighting this is, is let's not get caught up with, you know, the contemporary Hatshep, so it was the first female pharaoh. That's, that's why I'm going through all of this. And of course, we all love Hatshep, so of course, and we understand what she stood for. I am very strong on symbolism, so I don't really believe she was a woman trying to dress up like a man. Let me just leave it at that again. But for sure, she 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 was not the first um, supreme female ruler. That's for sure. And she definitely was not the first female um, recognized ruler. Not even so, so Bet Neferu was seen as the first recognized female ruler. Yet still, Sobek Neferu must be highlighted as the first without any strings attached, without any regency, anybody next to me, or I'm just doing this until he gets big. None of these things was attached to, to Sobek Neferu. Even Hatshepsut had that regency attached to her for a time until she took supremacy and then she became the Hatshepsut that we know. But even herself was expressed many times, more so in that masculine form, uh, even, you know, literally, literally like a man, not just the beard now, but even when you observe the body, um, the, 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 the whole figure of a man was given to Hatshepsut. That's how she depicted herself. And this is why I know that a lot of what was applied to her like the so-called false being was not a literal thing. This, these sculptures and statues were designed to be symbolism 
as well are designed to be symbolic as well because the fact that listen to me good family the fact that her body was 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 designed in the way of a man this was not a, a kodak moment this was a message being expressed she was designed in the body of the man and she had the beard of the man but yet still she she was the woman had jepson that is to show you that anybody can do anything with a chisel and a hammer and a, a, a piece of stone and that's how she wanted herself to be expressed for for psychological reasons that's what it is that's what it is so in the same way because i know her body didn't change in the same way that is symbolic so is the beard and whatever else that pertains to the man it's symbolic she's showing you that she can do the same as any of the brothers but now, Sobek Neferu, who proceeded again, she came before uh, Hachepsu, and she did not go through none of that. She had full rights, and, and she needed not to portray herself in any of her her glyphs or whatever as anything masculine to to prove that listen she can do what she's doing now as you would have heard the different commentators earlier in the program speak about the rich legacy of that time the 12th dynasty they were speaking of all the different you know artifacts and Prosperity is a herbal remedy that has been naturally designed to nourish the prostate gland. Prosperity uses a combination of leaves, roots, and barks to create a tincture designed to nourish your prostate gland. It also will assist in prostate-related issues such as erectile dysfunction, swollen prostates, and problems related to the passage of urine. Call or WhatsApp 728-8289, 728 and get your bottle today. Prosperity.